I always kind of tremble when I talk about uh, the Lord's death. I don't quite understand what really took place, and so I, I am completely inadequate to try to convey to you what we're talking about here. But in a strange way, I am compelled to share with you because the little bit that I understand about what Jesus has done and is doing for us, it fills my soul, it fills my spirit. And so today I want to share with you a few thoughts as we prepare our hearts and minds to partake of the emblems. I want to share with you from the Gospel of John, chapter 12 verse 32 and 33. If you have your Bible and want to go there, uh, I would invite you to follow me there. The Gospel of John chapter 12 and verse 32 and 33. I'll be reading from the NASB today. John chapter 12, verse 32 and 33. And the text says, and this is Jesus speaking, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. But he was saying this to indicate the kind of death by which he was to die. In the Old Testament, we have this imagery as well. When the serpents were killing many of the Israelites uh, for a lack of faith. God removed his protection and the serpents came out. God told Moses to put up a bronze serpent on a pole and to lift it up and the, uh, the command was, look up and you will be saved. And those that made the choice to look at that bronze serpent on that pole were saved, were able to Avoid the death by the serpent. Jesus, when he was talking to Nicodemus, made reference to that story. This concept of being lifted up. And while we all long for the results of what Jesus did at the cross, when he goes beyond the cross into heaven and prepares things for us, there is something that we are told to do, and some of the commentators uh, were, as they described these passages, I loved how they encouraged us not to too quickly focus on the benefits of beyond what happened here on earth. In other words, yes, we long for the day. We're Seventh-day Adventists because we are looking for the advent of Jesus. Who is not excited to one day leave this planet? But before we get there, there was a horrific, a terrible death that occurred on this planet. Horrific, terrible death. And if we go out, I can go to this one. And so what we're going to be doing here this morning is focusing on what took place here on this earth as Jesus experienced the most excruciating pain that humans experienced back in those days. But I would add that on another level, Jesus experienced excruciating pain because not only is Jesus dying like other criminals in his day died on these crosses by Roman execution, but Jesus is experiencing something for the first time. And, and this is that area that is just so uh, foreign to me, where we begin to understand that Jesus, for the first time in eternity, something takes place. Jesus' very nature, the Godhead, as it were, was distorted. The deity, God himself, distorted. Truly distorted. Distorted, cut off. The nature of Christ completely changed forever. 
as in when Jesus is resurrected from the dead and he's still walking around for about 50 days here on earth, you may remember that in his glorified state, Jesus is eating fish. He's being touched. He is like you and I. Forever impacted throughout eternity, we will see the marks of the cross throughout the endless ages of eternity. I don't quite understand some of this. And so I'm so thankful for gifted men and women in our denomination and just in the Christian world as they spend time with God, God inspires them. And I read a book some time ago by Ty Gibson. I really appreciate the way God has blessed this brother, Ty Gibson, the book called The Sonship of Christ. You've got to pick that up, The Sonship of Christ. And here he's, he's tackling the subject of the cross. He's trying to understand, and he writes, and I quote, faced with the prospect of being completely cut off. According to the covenant contract made with Abram, Christ chose all others over himself. The obedience of Christ to which Paul refers is the covenant faithfulness to which all humans have always been called. And this next section here, follow me with trepidation and slowly. And I quote, at the cross of Calvary, we encounter God stripped naked of the essence of the divine identity. Stripped naked of the divine identity. In the cry of their election, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All that remains, how much all that remains is pure self-sacrificing love. All that remains on that cross. Hanging there alone, God alone without God. Did you catch that? God alone without God. For the first time ever in all eternity, we are on holy ground. As we try to discern this act of God, We are face to face with a God who literally loves all others above and beyond or before himself in that one colossal act, and I would say absolutely one colossal act, of perfect relational fidelity. I got tongue-tied earlier in the first service here. Perfect relational fidelity. Did you catch that? What's going on at the cross is so intertwined with relationships. Perfect relational fidelity. Christ confirmed the covenant. Christ confirmed the covenant. Beloved, I want to leave with you just a simple thought today. God in the flesh makes the decision to come down to this earth and to in some way, and when we get to heaven, we can ask him more questions because, folks, Ellen White doesn't say this for no reason. She says that the science of the cross is something that we will continue to study throughout the endless ages of eternity. I don't quite grasp all of this. But somehow, in this plan of salvation, Jesus, the Father and the Holy Spirit, make this decision that he would be cut off literally cut off in some sense where Jesus would never be the same so you and I would be able to spend eternity with he and our loved ones where there will be no more tears and no more pain forevermore. As we go first, though, through the cross, why the title The Glue today? Why the glue? I would propose to you that 
In that text where it says that Jesus is lifted up and he draws all men to himself, Several commentators point out that this concept of being drawn to Jesus, the sense here is that he or we are totally incapable of going to Jesus. And so it's through this supernatural process of us looking to him as he is up on that cross Something supernatural happens as we choose to keep our eyes riveted on the Son of God while he's on that cross, that we are supernaturally drawn, we are softened. Isn't it that way? How are you impacted when somebody touches your life in a meaningful way? How are you blessed when somebody decides to give to you, to bless you, isn't it true that when others do for us things that we don't even expect or when people really go the extra mile, kind of extreme blessings over our lives, in some cases people have given their very lives for others to the death. When we see this thing called love in action, isn't it true that something happens in here? Isn't it true that we are we are drawn to be grateful. So Jesus is trying to explain to us here, the Apostle John, I think, is trying to explain to us that when Jesus is up and our eyes focus on the Son of God and what's really taking place, or although we've got to confess, we don't really know what's going on with this colossal act. But something sublime and magnificent is going on that we are drawn to him And the glue is this, beloved, that as we're drawn to him and as Jesus draws us to himself, he holds us together because he is the glue. And somehow, supernatural, Jesus is able to hold all of us crazy people that are from different backgrounds and with different ideologies, different cultures and different, even though you're from Minnesota, I'm from California with Mexican roots that go to Spain and Africa. Did you know that I'm 25 sub-Saharan African? That's what my DNA says. We're such a hodgepodge today, but somehow Jesus is able to not only draw us to himself, but he holds us together. Because he is the glue with a capital G. And so I want to close today as we move into our communion service with a few more thoughts that I read on Facebook today from Ty Gibson. I really appreciate Ty Gibson. He says, the authenticity, the authenticity of my love for God is proven by my love for people. You caught that, didn't you? I heard those amens. The authenticity of my love for God is proven by my love for people. The moment I say to God, the moment I say to God, who is other-centered? Love. Love itself. I love you. God says, prove it by loving them. A key truth of scripture is that devotion to God can easily be faked by outward religious rigmarole, says Ty, and heavenward moral posturing, whereas the way we treat people, especially those below our social financial status, or I would add those that we just don't see eye to eye with, is harder to fake and is therefore the true revelation of our devotion to God. May God help us, beloved, as we look up to Jesus. Don't resist being drawn let go. Don't resist being drawn because when we're drawn, automatically what happens as our eyes are on him and he draws us, he is able somehow to hold 
us together. We are one in Christ Jesus, we are told. So as we partake of this, these emblems today, I want to ask, and you can come up at this point, I want to ask that you take time as you're going and chewing on the bread and you are drinking the wine. Our prayer is that you and I will always remember that through this process of keeping our eyes on Jesus, we are drawn and we are held together as Jesus becomes the glue in our lives and our church. At this time, we want to give a little bit of an explanation of what we want to do so we don't have a traffic jam. We, we have enough with traffic during the week, so we're going to try to avoid that here today. We have some deacons in the, bas- in the back, and we're going to have you folks file in through the middle here, this, these two sections. File through the middle, you're going to pick up your emblems, and then you're going to go back out and find your seat. And then when we're done here, the, the aisle, the wing sections, uh, you're going to just file out through, through your aisles right here, pick up your emblem, and then go back out the very far aisle, and then go and find your seat. I hope, I hope that made sense. So we'll have our deacons in the back uh, helping uh, file you out in just a moment. And then when you come here to the table, the emblems will be right here. You can just come and grab the bread and the wine and take it with you. Thank you. I'd like to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 30, excuse me. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 23. Paul here reflecting on his experience with Jesus and, and Jesus teaching him. Paul says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, it says here that he took bread. Can you imagine what it was like to be in that upper room with Jesus on Thursday night as he got ready to be sacrificed the next day? And he asks us and invites us to commemorate him. And so we're going to do that at this time. We're going to have, I, I, keep, I keep thinking we're going to give these out, but we're going to do it differently. Since COVID, this is very practical. Thank you, Nina. And so what we would like to do is have you now at this point start filing out. But before you do that, I just want to let you know that the Seventh-day Adventist Church practices open communion. If you're not a Seventh-day Adventist, but you want to partake of this gift of salvation, you are welcome to come because salvation is for all. And so we practice that in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. At this time, Nina and Brother uh, I forgot his, Thomas, you can begin to have people come and, and grab the emblems. Yeah.
have the juice, the wine, and the bread. And so we're going to continue to read here in verse 24. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me, said Jesus. Brother Bill. Father God, we are truly humbled. When we think about what you have done for us on the cross, we can't imagine what you've done for us. It's beyond the scope of our minds. But someday we may fully understand when we can spend eternity with you mm. and we can look back and we can learn how that was to happen. But we are thankful for this precious gift of your son and this bread which represents his broken body. Mm. For in John 6, you said, I am the bread of life. He also said that anyone that eats of that bread will live forever. Amen. And so, Father, as we take this emblem of the broken bread representing your body, we know that the only way that we can nourish our spiritual life is to eat of you. And so, Father, we are here hungry, hungry to hear the word, mm. hungry to put it into our lives mm. that we may be not only a blessing to ourselves, but our families and our friends and everyone around us, that we may have the spiritual energy, Father, to spread the good news of your love for them and the soon return of your Son, Jesus Christ, who we give thanks for. In his holy and blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Let us eat together the body of Christ. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Yeah. We bow our heads, please. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we can't express the gratitude for your gift. We can't ex imagine the agony it was to be separated mm. from your father, even for that short period of time that seemed like an eternity to you. Mm. To spill blood that we may be saved. Mm. The ultimate sacrifice, that one of love, where there's nothing in return, and that you wait for us to respond to that love. Thank you for your patience for your perseverance, and for wooing us in with just your presence and your gift. We humbly, we humbly come before you in remembrance of you as we partake of this wine, that we remember the special gift you have given us, that someday we can be reunited with you if we so choose to do that. In the holy name of Christ, I pray. Let's take together and drink of the blood of Christ.
Jesus that night finished this portion by saying, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord, and that, that was a part of my notes, we'll, we'll do that another time. We want to praise the Lord for his blessing over our service. And as you go home today, our prayer is that Jesus would be everything to you and to me as we're drawn to him so he can hold us together. He is the glue, beloved. He is the glue. Thank you.